here we are now going to describe how the trigonometric ratios differ as you change the angle so uh, it is to be understood in this way that the trigonometric ratios are always dependent on the angle of which the trigonometric ratios are defined for for example in this case if you look closely i am now going to move uh, the point b on the circle so the point b is moving on the circle the constraint on point b is it cannot leave the circumference of the circle now as i'm moving in the anti clockwise direction you can see the angle value is increasing angle value is increasing right now it is 48.2 degrees as i'm increasing now it is going towards 90 degree simultaneously if you see the perpendicular height if you notice is also increasing right so 92.92 now 0 0.93 0 0.94 like that and the base is also decreasing the value of b so point c is coming closer to a point b is going towards uh, and uh, you know towards the y axis so this is how it is now i am taking it down so if you see as b is coming down the angle is going towards zero c is coming towards and going to merge with b soon so this is how it is so you must be familiar with this changing of position of b so as i am increasing the b from 0 towards 90 hypotenuse length remains the same perpendicular keeps on increasing base keeps on decreasing and then finally base becomes 0 over here and as i cross the 90 degree mark can you see now the angle is more than 90 degree it is in point b is in second quadrant and if you notice we can still find ratios of p by b p by h and all that and on the right hand side if you can see the values are changing so as the theta is increasing the values are now some of the values are also negative if you can see cos theta is negative tan theta is negative secant theta and cotangent theta are negative why because in this case b has gone b has become negative because it is in negative x-axis now as I'm going towards the third quadrant again, few ratios are negative, few are, few are positive. Both P and B have become negative now. Now as I am crossing the uh, third quadrant, I'm moving into fourth quadrant, again few are negative and few are positive. So if you notice, once again I'm showing only in first quadrant all the, all the ratios are positive. Can you see? All the ratios are positive. As the point b moves into the second quadrant c cos theta and tan, tan theta has become negative why because if you notice point c is in the negative x-axis so base is negative point b is still in the first uh, in you know the y x uh, the x y coordinate of point b that is this line bc is still positive so hence sine is positive right and hypotenuse is always considered to be positive as i move to the sec the third quadrant now both AC as well as BC has become negative. Can you see? Uh, though it is not being shown here in the diagram, but you can see that C point C here is in, neg in negative X axis. Similarly, this length BC is also along the negative Y axis. So hence, both are negative. So only tan is positive because negative by negative becomes positive, isn't it? Now, as I move the point B, again, you can see that base is shrinking perpendicular is increasing and in fourth quadrant as i am moving towards 360 degrees base is increasing again perpendicular is shrinking and cos values are positive all other are negative cos and secant are positive all other are negative so this is how so you can use this uh, session to understand how theta changes and basis that how the ratios are also changing so hence don't don't think that trigonometry is all about angles lesser than 90 degrees there is significant meaning of um, angle more than 30 degrees oh sorry 90 degrees as well so basically if you now let, let me stop here so if you see at 124.2 degrees from the positive x-axis the sine value will be defined as nothing but the length of bc which is positive because it is in the the positive side of the you know y quadrant uh, y axis so b c b is along positive y so it is positive but ac is negative 
AC, this line AC is negative. Why? Because it is along the negative x axis. So, hence, let us say if you have to find out sine of this value 124.2, which will be nothing but drop the perpendicular from B, which happens to be positive, and the foot of the perpendicular, that is C, is away from A. So, how much is this? So, there is a negative value. Then, hence, sine theta here will be nothing but opposite by hypotenuse, which is 0.83 in the positive direction divided by 1, which is the hypotenuse length or the radius of the circle and the value is 0.83 similarly cos theta will be b by h so b is in this case it is negative negative though it is shown here as 0.56 because the absolute value of that um, side ac is 0.56 but since it is in the negative direction hence it is minus 0.56 so hence these are the for, these are these ratios are for calculation purposes but the actual values are 0.83 minus 0.56 minus 1.47, 1.21, minus 1.78 and 0 0.68. So hence, this, these are the values. You can notice how values of the trigonometric ratios are changing as theta is increasing and, and from 0 to, it has all the, the full coverage of 0 to 360 degrees, okay? And if it is more than 360, then it starts repeating. The value starts repeating, isn't it? See, you can see as I am I am completing 360 degrees, I am going now again back to the first quadrant. So the values will start repeating. So this is all about the different values of trigonometric ratios at different different angles.